Folks, thanks for joining me today. I'm uh, John Maskey. So uh, today's talk is about integrating AppSec and your DevSecOps on AWS. It's not really limited to AWS, what we'll be talking about today. Uh, and a lot of what I'm going to base on is my experiences at AT&T. So uh, as of this past February, I was an AT&T director of DevSecOps enablement. I'd spent three years doing that, uh, that effort. And uh, it was challenging. So I'm here to share some of our experiences with you uh, today. And we'll have room at the end for questions as well. Hang on. Let's try this. There we go. OK, so uh, the large telecom challenge. It's probably not limited to telecom, these kinds of challenges. But it probably is. Uh, more oriented towards large companies where the types of challenges we experience are they're, they're exponentially larger than what small companies would experience. There's still lessons here for small companies, but let's go through some of these. Uh, so under challenges, we have diverse skill levels, and I would add awareness of security issues as well in this, this bullet. Also, uh, we already had diverse pipelines outside of central DevOps. So obviously, a pipeline is very important to enable uh, a true DevOps automation. And uh, it's interesting that in, in smaller environments and pockets, you'll see DevOps spring up as kind of a grassroots thing. And, and that's very powerful. It's, it's good that way. But with large corporations, we need centralization at times to consolidate things like policy management for, for security policies. So uh, diverse pipelines was a challenge for us. We needed to consolidate, get down to one. Next up was the, the culture at, at uh, IT, specifically around the DevOps roles uh, for security. It was pretty much non-existent. And in part, that's because we really didn't have the tools available for our DevOps roles to identify uh, security issues and mitigate them quickly or, or eradicate them before they, they moved into production. So trying to change that culture involved quite a bit providing the tool set as well as some knowledge to go with this. And last is uh, program optimized for speed. So the AT&T program uh, was very focused on migrating a large number of applications to a DevOps framework that could improve our security posture for every application in our, our production application inventory. Now, AT&T, big company, big numbers. We have somewhere in the neighborhood of 7,000 production applications today. That's after reducing uh, about 3,800 3, of those applications through retirements in the prior two years. So uh, every time we, we push the stack down, it grows up further. And a lot of these applications are, are fairly old. They're long in the tooth. They're uh, old programming languages. We've got some COBOL out there. And it becomes a real trick to find ways to uh, build that, those types of applications into a pipeline. Uh, so some opportunities exist as well. Anytime we have a, a challenge, there's frequently an opportunity to go with that. We have pockets of advanced knowledge and CICD implementations within the business. So uh, bullet number two in the challenge is the, the obverse of that is we've got smart people who have gone through this. They've, they've built purpose-built pipelines, sometimes with security concerns and scanning in them. And we can leverage these people, these teams, this knowledge uh, for requirements and, and maybe some architecture on how to build that central pipeline that we need to build for the guys. Next up is significant CICD platform was already in the works. Well, it turns out that we had started building a centralized CICD platform that was focused on microservices. Microservices is a very different animal than a monolithic application or really anything along those lines. But it was a really good starting point, because being at AT&T, it already had the, the philosophy that it would need to scale very large at some point. So it was, it was a good place to start. Uh, and then third up, we had an executive appetite for really quick change. There was a, a big concern that although we would taken care of our, our critical applications in terms of scanning for PCI, uh, and, and SOX, uh, that's, uh, we really hadn't done that for more than about 10% of our applications. And we needed to uh, shift that into the, the greater inventory of the full 7,000 set. 
uh, at the same time we needed to shift security testing left. Uh, it was pretty far right when we got started. So as a director in at and I, uh, I had pretty good pull with my peer directors and with the next level up. But a program as large as this really required strong executive sponsorship to get started. This, this was not something that could be done grassroots. And uh, to that end, our CIO actually was the primary mover on this three years ago when we got started. And she had set a goal out for us that we would uh, migrate like um, about, excuse me, oh, there we go, about 30% of our application base to DevSecOps to start uh, scanning for, uh, or static scanning and dynamic scanning for security vulnerabilities and change the culture at the same time in 12 months. So it, it's great that uh, they had so much confidence in us and we actually made pretty good progress, I think. But... Uh, the executive sponsorship helps you to drive the cultural changes that are necessary to achieve this. Uh, that includes being able to reach into the training department, for instance, and help build new training to bring the, the overall DevOps roles up a level and start considering security, to start understanding the tool sets, that they don't have to become security experts themselves, but they do have to understand uh, how tool categorizes uh, security uh, vulnerabilities or weaknesses and how it helps them actually do something about those weaknesses quickly. And then next was working across with partner organizations. So that's kind of a loaded term because that can be both internal and external. Uh, from an external standpoint, we have uh, some outsourced code development and application maintenance. And uh, outsourced uh, situations like that uh, generally uh, the company that's in charge of, of that program is very ta tactical in nature. They're really interested in keeping the lights on. They're not interested too much in advancing uh, a program outside of what at and is doing. And so when it comes to security, we need our, our C-levels talking to each other uh, as partners and, and uh, essentially getting them on board with the idea that things are going to change with our pipeline and with the partner's pipeline uh, there's integration between pipelines to ensure that, that we're building security into applications that are actually a little bit out of our control from, from a touch standpoint. Uh, and then lastly, collectively working toward a seemingly impossible goal. I, I really thought um, going after a third of our inventory was impossible. It turns out I was right. <laughs> but. Uh, I, I was wrong that we could even make as much progress as we did. We just about made it. And I'm sure we're there now. It's, uh, it's been a few months, and I'm sure we're probably hit the goal. All right, so switching gears slightly. Now, uh, th this is a three-layered slide, and the, uh, the first layer is a CICD uh, pipeline. That's indicated by these, these uh, I guess you'd call them pink bullets. Uh, on my right, we, or over here, we've got production and results, for instance. That is overlaid on top of a DevSecOps lifecycle. And you can see that down below. We have columns for design, build, integrate, deploy, monitor. And then overlaid on top of that are where we've introduced security functions, AppSec functions. So for instance, left to right, we've got threat modeling. By the way, uh, are, are you guys, show of hands, are you familiar with CICD pipeline? Th that makes sense to you? Great. How about the, um, the DevOps lifecycle? You've seen that, makes sense? Okay, good. Uh, I'm curious next about these bullets. So as we go through this, when I, when I mention the bullet, raise your hand if you're familiar with the concept, okay? Threat modeling. Great. Uh, IDE static scanning. Very good. Uh, static scanning. Software composition analysis, dynamic scanning, pen testing. All right, good. So we've got about between 30 and 60% of the audience understanding these concepts. They're actually pretty important, and I'd encourage you to go over to the Vericode booth later to discuss each one of these items. They're very important in a robust uh, uh, AppSec uh, insertion into DevOps. Um, what I was trying to note here, though, 
is where we took a standard DevOps pipeline on top of a standard lifecycle, and we started inserting security into that pipeline and onto that lifecycle. So for instance, the, the uh, pipeline itself is actually between threat modeling and pen testing. Generally speaking, that pipeline is about automation, and you're not going to automate much about threat modeling and pen testing. So the real focus here is IDE static scanning, static scanning, software composition analysis, and dynamic scanning. And by adding these components to an existing uh, CICD pipeline, we're able to start introducing the tools that developers, testers, uh, production ops folks need in order to, uh, to wrap security around the software that they're developing and pushing out to deployment. So I'm uh, going to go to the next slide now. So one more overlay for you. Right now, I'm overlaying what Vericode offers in terms of these security functions. Uh, there's not currently a line to threat modeling, but I, I would bet that there will be a line there at some point. I think that would be uh, partly what my role is going to be. But uh, the important thing here is Vericode Vericode is a company that offers uh, uh, services across the entire life cycle for DevOps. OK? All right, thank you. Hello? All right. OK. Um, there's, reasons, there's reasons why I'm bringing up Vericode and why it was important in our effort. So at and is a big company. Actually, let me go to the next slide right now. Uh, AT&T is a pretty big company. When we do things and we're, we're given options to, to do A or B, we usually say, okay, we want to do both. And in this case, we had an option to either host our own environment for security scans or use a service. And what do we do? We did both. It, and it was, it was a nice comparison point. Uh, what we found is if speed is your objective, that's probably a bad idea to, to try and host your own security scan platform. For one thing, it's not a key competency of AT&T. We wouldn't expect it to be. Uh, and for another, it takes forever for any project to put together hardware, to configure software, to get up and running with scans. Compared to if you buy something as a service, you're up very quickly. It's simply APIs to your dev, DevOps your, your pipeline. So what we liked about Vericode was it really was full, full life cycle, and we could use what we needed to. When I said we, we actually had two solutions going, we didn't use Vericode for everything at at and I think many of us wish we had. So far, the results have been pretty, pretty good. OK, let's move on. OK, so now these are, I would maybe think of these as more tips uh, rather than a checklist. But identify and collaborate and align with your partners. So we talked a little bit about this. And it's not just external partners. It's, it's internally as well. You've got uh, the chain of command that you've got to communicate with. You have to have every element from the top to the bottom communicating with their peers because it really does have to be a corporate uh, initiative to succeed. When you're changing a culture in a company, that's a really big deal. And although we're really talking about a, an IT culture of DevSecOps, it touches every part of the company. Every part of the company benefits. Secondly, have an idea of your metrics up front. How do your sponsors and partners measure progress? How do you, the teams who work around DevSec and Ops measure progress? Everyone's got a different view of what's important to them. You need to understand what that view is and present data in a contextual format that makes sense and is valuable to them. Thirdly, go agile. If you're moving a large number of applications to a DevSecOps, if you do this in sprints, you're going to be better off. You're going to learn things with every group you move. So we moved a pilot set of about 25 applications learned that we hadn't thought nearly enough about uh, what types of templates we needed to offer on the front end of the CICD pipeline, adjusted that, and ran the next 25 thrill. Uh, what is it? Uh, wash, rinse, repeat? 
Uh, and fourthly, run an internal campaign. This was extremely important to our success. Uh, we had a message coming down from the top executives saying uh, uh, on a quarterly basis, this is what we're going to do this year and the next year. This is why it's important. And every quarter they'd say, this is what progress we made. That was really good from the top level. But we had a rather uh, involved communication plan to attack vertically and horizontally. So horizontally, I mean, we would go after uh, uh, team lead uh, level groups and, and other director level groups and really try and understand their specific concerns because they're hands-on. And then we'd march it up a level and look for, uh, for vice presidents who had a group of applications. What were their concerns? Did they have just legacy applications or did they have a, a mix of new and old? And were, they, would, they would tell us what their concerns were, what their roadblocks were, and at the same time, they were owning the fact that they had to move to DevSecOps. So we were really there to help them rather than the other way around. Uh, a little bit more on the internal campaign. We, we ran roadshows, we created training, we uh, ran contests, uh, brown bags, really anything you can do to get the employee base engaged and learning is a very good thing. And then last, report progress contextually and in near time. Contextually, we talked a little bit about the need to know what your stakeholders' uh, 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 metrics needs are and uh, reporting that out frequently in some a way that they can understand is important. And I'll tell you a little story about that. We actually started with a, a fairly technical dashboard when we launched DevSecOps. And we thought, this will suit everybody's needs. And naturally, we were wrong. So uh, unable to conform that particular dashboard, we stood up another one that was more executive oriented. And that did good for a while. Then we found our business partners had a, a big interest in what was going on with uh, security for their applications and services. So at that point, we, we didn't really throw in the towel, but we turned to Veracode and said, look, we've got this problem. What do you offer? And it turns out they, uh, they had a dashboarding capability built on Looker, which uh, allowed us to customize views of metrics and analytics for essentially uh, any role that uh, was coming to us, whether it was a, a vertical role, like a, a, an executive, a, a VP, or a horizontal role uh, for a specific application. So that was very helpful to us. OK, so the key lesson number three is solid teaming is key with a complex and uh, a comprehensive and fluid plan. So here, it's important that we map out and communicate a broad uh, plan with confidence. I, m I might have meant a plan broadly and with confidence. Uh, and secondly, to set bold goals. Don't, don't set meek goals because you might hit them and then what are you going to do? Go to the bar? Uh, and, and don't wait until that plan is perfect either. It, it, we're living in an agile world. You, you plan and you design for as much as you can for the next iteration and maybe two after and then you, you really start executing. Okay, so key learnings recap. This is what we talked about. We talked about strong executive sponsorship is very important to kick your project off and keep it moving forward. Secondly, that it's valuable to use a security scan service company that can offer uh, essentially software as a service, security scans as a service, and has a robust platform and an understanding of the full life cycle of DevOps. And thirdly, solid teaming is essential. Work with your peers, your, your partners, build the team around you the very best, and make sure that everybody on teams are well-educated about uh, security issues. All right. All right, thank you. And uh, I'm open for, for business here. Who's got questions? <laughs>